and, and, and took a leg lock from there. So we're just going to do one thing on how to get the guy into a leg lock from standing. So it's important if you wanted to play that game, especially when you like just just like training, you can try and do mad shit and uh, and, and, and pull stuff off. So I'll uh, I'll, I'll watch it. So just just do the left leg for now. So if it's grappling. Uh, we're obviously going to be a little bit lower, we can set this up off uh, a head snap, but if for MMA you can set it up higher, obviously it's, it's a bad idea to be really dropping on your back in MMA, but some people do it. So for now we'll just go for a grappling base, so I'm going to go for like a, a head snap, just how we set his double legs up normally, a little pop, and then he's probably going to straighten up as I pop, as he pops up, there's my double leg, and I'm going to, but for now I'm going to finish it. So when I shot that double, boom, I'm not catching his knee. Normally when I finish a double, I'm going to block him as low as possible here, so he's got nothing to base out, and he's going to take him down. I'm going to catch him around the waist on his kick. So he ain't going to go down, he can move, he can hop, which is what I want. So I'm going to drive him, I'm going to sit back, as I sit back, boom, I pop him over, I come onto my side, and I'm in leg control. It's kind of like a, a cross between one and two, but it's fine. I've got a hook on his leg, and I'm pitching my knees, and I'm isolating his leg. Perfect. Looks complicated, it's not. It's all about the way I drop back. So I'm going to we're wrestling, little snap, shoot my double, I come up, I switch the hook to his waist here, I drop back. Notice this goes on his hip. As soon as we hit the deck, I turn onto my side and I pinch my knees. Ready to finish the ankle. We're not finishing anything now. Just pinch. This foot can be where it wants, as long as it's tucked underneath, it's fine. And squeeze those knees together. Anyone want to see that again? Yeah. Head snap, boom, shoot that double just like we did in the wall. Kick this leg up, but this goes on his waist. I just drop back, come up, sweep. Before he can sit up into me, I just turn to my side and I pinch my knees together here to control this knee. And this doesn't, doesn't matter where this is as long as I've hooked it. And we can uh, work as finishes from there. Cool. I'll come round anyway, have a go. We're not going to start trying to tap each other with it because it's there, but I want you to get used to getting in position because it's easy to get it wrong. And it's just, it's, it's an easy one to balls up and later on, like if you guys are going pro or if you're definitely come through it's allowed. You want to know how to do it and you want to know how to recognise when you're in a, a bad, bad position. So uh, we'll carry on with this tape down for this, just so we can get that, that, uh, that double leg. So we've shot, we've picked up, we've dropped back, we've taken him down, so we've ended up on a side here. Now it's like, like you want these feet as hidden as possible. A few of you are having your feet up here and you can peel it like we did last time and stand up, which is shit. Or he might end up with an ankle lock of his own and we're in like a bit of a leg lock battle here, which is, which is also shit. So anytime you can tuck your feet in, it don't matter where, just get them tucked tight. Last time we were doing all this stuff with position one and two, which uh, we're not going to go over today, but for those who are here, they've got that to play with as well. So first things first, ankle lock. So before we were here, if I start trying to crank here, it's not really going to work, I'm on his calf muscle and, uh, and he can resist it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a little shrimp like we, did, uh, like we did in a warm up and slide my hand up here. Now it's getting looser for him when I do that, so he might try and pull his leg out. When he does, he just puts it straight where I want it anyway, like on his Achilles tendon. And he's got these ankles on which is lovely. So you want it anywhere the ankle is, that's a good ankle lock. So I get there, I get high. Like I was saying before, I want my hand on my own nipple. I'm going to grab a guillotine grip, I'm going to clamp my elbow down, roll my shoulder back, all the time I'm pinching my knees, I'm just opening up so you can see where I've got them, and as I bring all that down, I just angle off, and it's, it's going on, so it's a little hip movement, so without the hand control, it shouldn't be any more than that to put a good ankle lock on. If I'm doing this, then I've probably got the hand position wrong. So, I've landed, and I'm really low on his calf. All I need to do, a little bit of a shrimp, just so I can get that room, loosen my knees a little bit. He might try and pull his foot out, that's fine. I bring it up, as soon as it's where I want it to be, I pinch it back down again. Guillotine grip. Bring that elbow down, roll my shoulder back, and then a little pressure with my hips. This is just coming up, I'm kind of uppercutting my face slightly with this hand, but it shouldn't have to be loads, just enough as a hip, just to get his toes moving back. It's a toe basically, but with uh, an Achilles lock. Does anyone want to see that again? Cool. One more thing you can play with. So you've got that. So get to the bottom. Always go for the ankle lock first. So you finish that. Then we're going to go to the heel up position. Heel up, as I say, you want to do it nice and carefully, is if you've lost this. So I haven't got this in. And sometimes now I'm controlling his leg. I can't get it back. So I'm just going to bring my shoulder back. 
See how his heel pops up. If I just start trying to reach back for it, I might not catch it. So look, I reach back. This is exposing his heel. I don't, a lot of people go here and start trying to put it on, but I'm on the meaty bit. And when we're sweaty, it's just gonna slip. So I go back, make a thumb, and I'm just going so that my thumb's still touching his heel. That's bang on there. I make a gable grip, and I want to make it as painful as possible in his ankle before I even crank anything on. By that I mean I want it to be like an Achilles lock on his Achilles tendon. It feels like I'm putting pressure there. That's good, because he's probably going to tap a lot quicker from that than waiting for his knee to go, if you're applying it. So he's just going to go to there, and all I want you to do is just feel a bit like, just put a tiny bit on so you can feel where it would go, and then let it go. Because all you need to do to tap it there is just, is just move. And, uh, and he'll, he'll, he'll go straight on the knee. So for now, you bring his heel up, slide, so it hooks in, it should feel like a little latch. Gable grip, pressure on his Achilles tendon, and just feel that, so just take the slack up a little bit and then let it go. Don't wait for your guy to tap, because by the time you feel pain in your knee, it's generally because you've already snapped your ACL, which is a bit shit. So, go with that for now. Yeah, feel it and let it go. Don't, don't be trying to crank each other's knees out. Yep. Has everyone got that? Same as what we've been doing so far, just with that extra finish on, and then we're going to move to a completely new position then. Cool. Everything from here. We did troubleshooting where we were preventing the guy from standing up by changing positions, and we also did where he peeled his foot off and butt scooted out and started trying to stand up, so I was beating him to the punch, and then I was shooting back in and attacking back from my leg off again. So that was kind of pretty much all the positional stuff we did last time. Uh, first thing we're going to do is just the next stage of that recovery game and uh, then we're going to add what, I, what he does because a really good like, defence from here is the stiff leg so he pulls his toes back and like now he's basically screwed up my whole game a lot of people forget to do this even like experienced dudes but when it does happen then it's really shit so we've got a little, little game plan we're going to do in a minute but for now what he's going to do is he's going to peel his foot off as he stands up and he's going to get stood above me now, if I stay here and think, right, I'm going to try and finish this or somehow do something, he's just going to mount me. So push it through and it's all gone wrong. So as soon as we get to here, so I've come up, even if I come up with this, I can try that sweep that he did off the takedown, but it's not very high percentage. He's going to pull his heel off. As soon as he does and starts trying to stuff, I'm going to go out the back door, and come through, pick his leg up and get it tight again. And look away at boom, I can jump back from my leg lock. So slowly now, it looks a bit crazy, but it's not. It's just going out the back door. He either stands up or he peels my foot off and stands up. Now here, he's really bad. I can try and get the heel back in and maybe fight for it, but it's not good. As soon as that's gone, it's bad. He pushes my knees, I come through, out the back door, stand up and pick this up. If he drops the belly down, that's, that's fine. I'll just try and jump on his back. If he turns, which is more likely, I can just jump in and re-attack for that position one. This is high recovery. Last time we did low recovery where he peeled my foot off, he foot scooted out, I did a technical stand up and shot back in. This time it's high because he's done that and he stood up. I'm going out the back door, coming through, picking the single leg up, driving into the floor and shooting through. As soon as I get here, just get back into that position one, pinch your knees. Always get to that knee pinch and then go again. So just have a couple of reps, a couple of times each, and we'll just do it for five minutes, then we're going to troubleshoot this position again. Now, when he stands up, he wants to put this foot flat on the deck. So he stands up and he puts it flat. Now that's flat, there's nothing I can do to it really. Nothing without doing anything mental and probably bad for myself. If you're here and some of you are standing up and turning away, like you're going to turn away towards that, like just turn that way, and they're going to try and drag the foot out. <laughs> Look what he's done with his leg. Yeah, loads of you are doing it, so if you're going back here. So we're here. Loads of you are trying to stand up, so you get this foot back like a technical stand-up, and then you turn away and try and run off. Look, boom. your knee's going to explode. You need to get up and get the foot flat, really flat. That's like your basic, basic, and probably your best defence against an ankle lock is to get here. Same with the heel hook. If you can get your foot flat on the floor, there's no heel to hook. And then if Kev clears that ankle and I'm too slow, he's mad with me, and it's all gone wrong, and it's good for him. So never, ever, when you're in this position, turn and try and run out you're just going to get caught in your look. It's going to be really bad. So just a couple more goes, but just re remember that. So when you're standing up, you peel that foot off, I'm coming all the way up and getting that flat on the deck. If my heel's pushing in, then it's safe and I'm not going to get ankle locked either. So a couple more of them, and then we'll uh, 
we'll move it on. And the hip thrust is back. So forget that first takedown, you've got that now, so you can keep drilling it another time. If you carry on drilling it tonight, you're just going to like slow it down and miss stuff. So just start in position one. So we did this for the first time I came here. All you're doing is doing a little sit out, coming over, and get into position one this way. Really basic, really simple, but it's probably the most effective one you've got. First thing we're going to do is Kev is just going to stiff leg straight away, boom. So there's no more finishing the ankle lock from here. The best, if you want to keep this position, you can start trying to work heel ups and stuff, but again, it's still quite difficult, is to do the low reset that we did, where I just step my foot off and come back up and then re-attack for it. That's like one idea, but we're not going to do that today. That's like, for you guys who were here last time, you can do that. What I'm going to do straight away is I'm just going to turn my body. As I turn, I'm going to pass to my opposite side and I should be able to finish a quite fast, quick catch ankle lock there. I can also go back and attack for a heel hook quite quick. This isn't the best position. This is quite a bad leg control position. So I've got to really squeeze my knees to keep control here and boom. But it's worth having a pop as you roll over to get to this position and finish it. Because if you can roll it fast and get that tap, it's quite fast, uh, fast finish. So here I've gone and he's stiff legged. As soon as he does, I just pass it, roll to the other side, and I'm straight on, and it usually goes on pretty quick, does that? And it just go for the ankle up for now, because you can actually try and finish each other with it, and uh, get it slowly to start off with, but speed it up there, because this has got to be quick, because this isn't a very good leg control position. Mm. I'll show you how to lock it down tight in a minute, but this foot has to be flat as well. If I've got the heel up, my toes out, this gives care a handle to peel my foot off with. Whereas if I just keep it flat on his body, there's nothing on my foot for him to grab. He can still stuff it in that, but it's safer. Tap to in there. Pinch my knees. This foot's hidden. The same principles apply. Elbow, shoulder, hips. Cool. Have a go at that, and then we're going to show you how to lock this position down properly. Um, if he's not that up on leg locks, you can just do it fast and scare it, and it's going to catch him, and you'll tap him. But if he knows what he's doing, this can be a little bad position because he's not a lot of control. So it's good for that. Um, if I do go up and lock me. So okay, it's gone down, position one, I've stiff legged him, he switched it round, going for this cheeky little quick, quick ankle up here, pinching his knees really tight, so if I, if I don't know what I'm doing, he goes fast, then he's probably going to catch me in an ankle lock, but if someone did this to me, I would still be seriously keeping this straight, and I'm thinking, oh shit, bad things are going to happen, and look, I can dig in here, come up, put this onto this bit, and I can finish in with like a, a car slice in here. So this is bad. We're going to drill this now just so you can get it in here. It's good if people do this on you. And also a lot of BJJ guys leg lock here. So they just underhook that side and they try and do ankle lock this side. Now this is really shit. I don't know why people do it. But if this goes here, then you've got your own heels there as well. But people who leg lock this way, which is like 90% of BJJ guys, this is really easy to get because there's no control on this leg. This stiff leg is actually stopping him from counting this because it's trapping this leg. So, ideally they're probably going to be this way. This is worse for me because he can still heal up me. But I dig my hand in, there's a gap here for me to feed that hand in. Catch, catch. And at the moment, my radial bone is pointing in the direction of his knee. To get it on, I want it pointing this way. So I pull up and rotate. So I'm doing that movement and it just kind of scrapes down the back of his calf. And this foot is on this hip just to kind of control him from sitting up into me. If I can, when I've got to here, if he loses control of that, I can triangle here and it makes it even worse. Sorry, Dave. Sorry. Yeah. So I can get there and that puts loads of pressure on here, but he's probably going to be hanging off this like a pit bull. So that's when I need to just feed that in, foot on hip, roll it in and extend. Have a go at that. That just kind of highlights a little potential error in this position and then we'll look at preventing that. Nine times out of ten, but the tenth time you might pull the ankle lock off, and the next time, two times out of ten you'll do it, so that's what you want to come from. Anyway, so I've gone back, position one. You guys stiff leg me, I'm switching it over, and I'm coming over here. Now, rather than trying to lock down and go for a quick lock, this guy's decent, so I want to lock him into a position. So I'm going to catch my own shin here, because that's going to make a triangle position. So if you just come around here, that's going to make a triangle position that's going to control him. Whereas before, the only control was the knee pinch. Now, I've got that triangle. I'll lift his leg up, make a leg triangle, and this foot here is going to tuck into the crack of his ass. And then I squeeze my knees tight again. So now, I've locked this leg down. 
So like before we did the leg knot that controlled him, this is like the leg knot, it's called the saddle is this, like the bottom saddle. Tight, the leg's on the outside, I still want it this side, I don't want it underneath me because I can't attack it as much. Pinch it really tight, get that control. Now if Kev tries to wiggle a bit now, it's kind of, it's, it's a good lockdown, it's really good control. I don't even have to bother about like, submitting him yet, I can just sit here. If he starts to peel my triangle off at all, then I can use my hand again just to like catch it there, which is going to control him enough time for me to kick that out and get back. So you can kind of hand fight from here if you need to. Finish from here, you can do all your ankle locks that we did before, but sometimes it's difficult to get your hand in. So you take this hand, go underneath, make some space, then go back, ankle lock. So if you're here and you want the ankle lock, this hand can come underneath because you, you, you're you making your own space. Even You can open your knees because you've got the squeeze, make the space, slide that hand in, come up, ankle lock. So you've got that one. Alternatively, same thing we did before, look, shoulder goes back, heel pops up, hook the thumb in, and I've got the heel up position there. We're not finishing it, we're just catching that position. And it's bad, this is worse than the other one because it's the inside of the leg, it's really weak in there. So, two options from here. I'm locked down, I take this hand, and I just dig that just to make a bit of room for me to slide this hand in. Work it all the way up to the top, shoulder back, elbow down, ankle lock. Comes out, pinch the foot, catch there, nice and low. Remember, we're not going high here. Even now, and I'm not particularly sweaty, that feels a bit slippery. It's kind of friction that's holding his heel there. Go there, now it's my bone structure that's holding his heel there, which is a lot stronger. I think. Cool, one more time with that roll. So, position one. Oh, he's sick of legging me. So I'm rolling it over, I'm catching here, but I'm going straight for my shin. I kick this up, come through, and I'm sticking this shin right into his crack of his ass, so I'm nice and low on his leg. This doesn't need to be in anywhere at the moment. I might just hold this for a minute and just stabilise my position. From here, I can either catch here or here, dig in, now I can start to finish my ankle lock, or go back and heel lock. So you're yeah, catching your shin, kicking up, triangle into the crack. Squeeze your knees, always squeeze your knees. Off we go. Entry. So I did it off this positional entry here. That's what we did last time, and that's what you guys have like, hopefully been drilling. But if I end up cross grip this way, then I can get straight to the saddle. I come in, I sit back, I catch my shin exactly where we were before. Look, lift, triangle, and in. So it's just a little idea how to get in from standing. And if you want to play this game, then you can go straight for it. So if I'm starting to play with the heel look here. The only way Kev can really go, and if my knees are really tight, it's probably not going to happen, so I have to bait him into it. And it's like, like I was saying to like some of the more advanced guys, you can bait people into leg locks. If I start going for a heel look and he's got a free leg and he kicks off, well, I can scoop it and I can do crazy like leg laces. From heel look, this leg might pop out, I can go to toe holds. So I can get any like leg lock from here. So we're going to show a transition to a knee bar. So I'm here, this pressure is taking him that way. So for him to reveal, uh, relieve pressure on his knee, he can kick that leg over and start to turn belly down. I allow him until here. And then I knee bar him. Yeah, go back. Let's kick back. So we're here. I'm faking this. I don't even need to heel up. If we're not playing heel looks, sometimes people still get scared. So we might not be playing heel looks, but I might just kind of expose his heel and just be like, yeah, look what I've got. Then he'll kick his leg over and spin. So if it's in this position already, I can allow him to keep turning. He's going to keep scrambling. As soon as I'm in this position, his knee is now pointing straight into my groin, then I've got to keep it tight. If I keep it loose still, he's going to roll all the way and get his leg out, yeah? So as soon as I've allowed him enough space to get himself into a bit of shit, I clamp it down. I can go under the armpit, hip up, or I can let it go all the way, catch his heel, I put this foot flat, and I'm just going to bridge. Either way, it's going to hyperextend this knee. One more time from the start. It seems complicated, but it's actually quite cool. And if the guy's really strong, he's got a good scramble, you can allow him to just get himself into deep water. And that's the thing with leg locks. You're never going to just catch this and go boom and get a leg lock on a decent guy. You'll get to here, but you're probably not going to finish it. So that's when you need to start playing like all this sort of stuff to, to sort of go up to get a finish. And it's like, it's like you're never going to just pass someone's guard and come over him in a decent competition. You're going to have to work at it, and that's the same with this. So, this time, rather than taking it with this arm, we're going to pass it to this side, yeah? Or you might just have ended up here. I come in close, really close to him. 
catch him here, drop his back, catch my own shin, keep his leg up, saddle. Here. Don't worry too much about that, it's just a way to get into here. So I'm going to bait him with this, he kicks his leg all the way over and starts to turn. I let him turn until we get to here, knee bar him. Here. All I need to do is just make sure that his knee is pointing straight down so I can catch his heel with both hands. Cool. It doesn't matter if his leg's here or if it's come here, even if it's here, you can still leg knee bar him. But ideally, he's probably going to still be here, so just make sure it's a straight leg lock as well. Just hip up and it will go straight on. Have a go. See how you get on with it. Really good. Just allow him to roll just enough so his knee's pointing straight down. Cinch it really tight. Hip up. It's because Dave's not here to bash, so he's going here. So we did, snap down, snap down, shot a double leg, we caught it high, dropped back and swept him and we were going straight into like a position one uh, variation. We did just a quick finish on the ankle lock, we popped the heel up to attack the heel hook and then if it was super slippy and we lost it, we were going toe hold into a heel up from here. So those are kind of the little, the little bits we were looking at from here. We then we went to troubleshoot, if he peels this off, and stands up, from there we were going back through, taking this single leg, taking it down and then re-attacking, so that's like our high recovery. From here when he's stiff leg, we just took it straight onto the opposite side and we were going for either a quick ankle lock or we realised the guy from calf lock is here, so we were switching into a bottom saddle position and we were doing all our stuff from there. Finishing off, if he kicks off, yeah. If he kicks off, we can do that, that, that leg lace that I was showing you. But don't worry about it for now. If he kicks all the way over, allow him with your leg triangle and then tighten it up when he's in deep water and then knee bar him from there. Just saying there, just a little like that side note. Calf slices and all that, they were pretty cool, but there's no point in trying to attack like a bent calf slicer from here if I've got his knee tight because there's so much other stuff I can do. If I've lost a knee bar, I can toll him. If Kev pulls himself here, there's no point in trying to knee bar him. So that is when I'll start going into like, all that other sort of stuff or trying to get on his back. So while his knee is up here by your groin, try and finish that knee bar because he's going nowhere. Cool. I hope that went all right for you today. It kind of flows on to the, uh, the first session I did where you've got like a completely new sort of like set up stuff. Last thing, sorry, I missed the plastic out if he's on his back. We kind of didn't really cover this in detail, but if you want to attack for that, uh, that saddle position, a really good entry is if you've got this control here, just come really tight in, drop back, and then we're back where we were before when I catch that shin, kick that leg up, and then drop back into the saddle. So then you can attack for that shun rolling straight away around there, going through the positions. So, what I'm trying to get at with all this stuff is that you shouldn't just hang off a leg lock and try and finish it if it's not working. If it ain't working, then just transition into a different position. Because if the guy defends, that's when you're going to get a chance to sort of try out some of these more obscure positions and lock them down. Like when you first try, when you first along mount and you mount someone, they'll bridge you off straight away. And it's the same with this. You'll learn a leg lock position and the guy will counter you straight away. It's not because he doesn't work, it's just because you need to start playing it. And the more you play it, the more you mount someone, the less time they'll roll you off. Then you can attack for arm bars with, with this. The more you time, spend time controlling him, then you can start attacking for heel ups and ankle ups and stuff and you'll get more and more high percentage because people say leg ups are a low percentage technique but I've been tapping a lot of guys with them and it's pretty much my main game so for me it's high percentage because I go for it most of the time so that's why it's a low percentage for a lot of guys because they don't drill it so drill it loads like reps and reps and reps just pick like two or three things and just rep it out and you'll get good awesome hope to see you back when I come back next time